am Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where we just throw precious gems into the street. Because this week we watched The Pirate Planet. Written by Douglas Adams. Directed by Pennant Roberts. And aired in September and October <laughs> of 78. So the first serial with Douglas Adams' name attached. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, future script editor Douglas Adams. Also future much more well-known for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Douglas Adams. <laughs> was actually working on that while he was writing the serial, apparently. So, now you know. And knowing is half the... No, no. <laughs> So yeah, pretty good serial, way better than the Space Pirates. They also played up the pirate Sound allegory that. a lot more in this serial. Yeah, actually, <laughs> with the robotic little Parrot. parrot that I thought was a flying squirrel. <laughs> he just has a pet flying squirrel. It looks more like a flying squirrel than a parrot. And there was the whole walking the plank thing. So. Yeah. <clears throat> and the fact that they were... Never mind. <laughs> Pirating planets? Yes. <laughs> Is that what you were going to say? Yeah. So it begins with the insane captain talking to his assistant, Mr. Fibuli. Yeah, who looks like Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> Except is way more timid and less confrontational than Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Not that he was confrontational to begin with. No, he's just passive aggressive and sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, but the captain doesn't like that. Right. The captain has, like, a robotic arm. Yeah. I guess he's supposed to be, like, Captain Hook or whatever. Oh, and like he has, a like, pseudo, a gun arm. Pseudo eye patch thing, too. Yeah, he has, like, a scouter. <laughs> <clears throat> so he keeps slamming his robotic arm in the console, yelling at Mr. Fibuli and how he's incompetent and how he needs to get his engines fixed. fixed so and, they can make the next jump. Right. And then you see the doctor talking to K-9. They're having some more... Woody banter as usual and uh K9 mentions I forget exactly what you know context he says this in but uh the doctor mentions that he's it was, it was a job well done whatever he was talking about and K9 says a job well done to the extent of 1.66666 and I was like wow he really is Satan <laughs> we were talking about the first piece of the key to time from previous cereal right oh yeah and the, the, the piece of cake yeah, and Canine's like, cake has nothing to do with it. <laughs> then Romana comes in, and she's reading the... Well, she doesn't come in. She's actually been there the whole time. She's reading the TARDIS manual. She reveals that... <laughs> she reveals that the Type 40 TARDIS was only taught as part of an elective course called, like, Outdated Machinery <laughs> or something like that. And the doctor's like, outdated? <laughs> but... The doctor's like, ah, it doesn't matter about the manual. I can totally pilot this thing. Been doing it for 523 years. And then things go horribly wrong. Yeah, and Romana's like, see, I just piloted it by the manual. But then you find out later it wasn't even the doctor's fault. Everything went wrong. It was just a remarkable coincidence. <laughs> right. You Back in the uh, control room with... Uh... The, the captain and Fibuli, things are also going horribly wrong in much the same way. And then Fibuli mentions that they finally stabilize and materialize and he reveals that there was some sort of distortion in time and space at the exact moment when they tried to materialize. Right. So you don't know exactly where they are yet. Well, the doctor's... I thought they were on a shit... Well, I, you, don't, you don't know what the yeah. control room is a control room too. Yeah, but the doctor's trying to get to Calufrax because that's where the scanner's pointing. Right, which is supposedly an uninhabited, icy planet yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. And then Ramana takes over and is like, I'll just pilot us to the landing. It makes a completely different dematerialization noise. Really? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Uh, it's weird and kind of more spacey. Huh. And they, I guess it's because she turned off the emotional dampening or whatever whatever she was talking about <laughs> the manual the doctor actually tears the page out of the manual <laughs> yeah there's actually a lot of um you know sci-fi mumbo jumbo in this serial more than usual <laughs> surprisingly especially <laughs> at the end when they realize that oh shoot we need to wrap up the plot 
Douglas Adams. Yeah, I'm pretty sure all four episodes of this serial ran overtime. Well, they're all 25. Yeah. Which is, they're usually 24 or 20. Yeah. Well, I mean, almost Definitely. 25. They're pushing the, the uh, envelope <laughs> of this time they have there. <clears throat> but they land and they, they hop out and the doc's like, this isn't Califrat. Where have you taken us, Romana? <laughs> and she's like, but this is this is the coordinates. This is where Califrat should be. This is where it started reminding me of a first or second Doctor serial because you have the sort of Greco-Roman almost <laughs> architecture and clothing and society, <laughs> not society, but and then you have the the pristine outer shell with the, with dark secrets. I guess that also. Applies to fourth Doctor serials, too. Not so much third. I mean, Peladon. <clears throat> well, I mean, I know that society looked pretty broken, <laughs> even from the outside. <laughs> so all throughout this, we've also been getting glimpses of this... cult? Well... Mementiads? Yeah, there's a guy freaking out, and probably dying, on a, on the bed, I guess, and his sister... His father are there trying to look after him, and his sister wants to do something, and his father's like, no, no, we can't do anything because we just can't. <laughs> and then the, the, the sister, I actually don't even know her name because she wasn't that important. No. Um, she wants to go question the authorities or whatever, and the father says, no, no, questions are forbidden or something. <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually... Nothing, but that's a subplot that's just completely dropped because the doctor says a couple things like, that's forbidden, but then they never bring it up again. I, I mean, I guess it's just sort of a look into their society, but yeah, they really don't. It doesn't play into anything at all. So the doctor's trying to get people to tell him where Califrax is, but no one's talking to him, and then K9's like, Romana would be better. And the doctor's like, what? <laughs> and K9's like, she's prettier than you. <laughs> I'm just like, no, no, she's not. And then, but obviously, when she starts talking to someone, they're like, yeah, hey, what's up? Here's some diamonds and rubies and stuff. Oh, I'll just throw them on the street because we have so many of them here. <laughs> just like, here you go. Ramona's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, well, he explains that every time the mines run dry, the leader of their planet announces a new golden age, and then the lights in the sky change, and then. The mines we fill. Right. The captain, that is. The captain is their their leader. No one's ever seen him. He just makes announcements. Seems like a pretty good leader to me. Stays out of your way, gives you free stuff. Commits genocide. <laughs> all of, the usual... others? <laughs> all the usual prerequisites <laughs> of being a good leader, you know? <laughs> anyway... Yeah, but Mon uh, offers him a jelly baby, and the dog's like, don't mind if I do! And the guy's <laughs> like, what? He takes one, and then, I mean, he thinks it's good and whatever, but as soon as he walks away, a guard steps up, and he's like, where did you get, what is that? Uh, and he's like, uh, uh, it's candy. And he's like, where did you get it? <laughs> he's like, uh, uh, my pocket. <laughs> and yeah, foreign objects are forbidden, I guess, even though all the jewels are from other planets. Yeah, but none of the people know that. They just know that the mines we fill... Yeah. It's kind of weird. Doesn't get explained till later. So the Doctor and Ramana... They split up for some reason, but I don't remember why. I think Ramana just... Ramana gets captured, that's why. She gets captured by the guard, and the Doctor doesn't notice because he's... <laughs> because Ramana went off to go find out more about the Captain, whereas the Doctor went to go find more about the Mentiads, because the guy talking to Ramana had mentioned the Mentiads... Right. The doctor's like, I'm going to go find out about the Mentiads. You go find out about the captain. Then she got captured. And then K9's like, oh, no. <laughs> he follows the doctor. Well, Romana sort of slyly mentions that he needs to go tell the doctor. Yeah, and K9's like, affirmative? <laughs> so the doctor shows up in the house of the guy who's freaking out and probably dying. Yeah, his name's what? Praxis? Prelix, I think. Prelix. Praxis sounded cooler. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Pelix. And the doc's like, hmm, looks to be mental energy. <laughs> and this other guy named Chemist shows up. Oddly a combination of my first and middle name. But anyway, <laughs> that's not the point here. <laughs> he shows up and he's very much on the side of the sister person. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think he's the I think he's Prelix's brother. Oh really? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. I think that's why. <laughs> yeah, he wants to take action. His father's like, no, no, we can't take action. We just have action to... Action is forbidden. <laughs> this podcast is forbidden. <laughs> but then the doctor... Tells them they need to take action, but yeah. then it doesn't matter because the Mentiads bust down the door to come take Prelix, and they mental zap the doctor, and K-9 tries zapping them, but the gun's... His gun doesn't work. They actually, there's another scene where the guards are chasing down the Mentiads and they're all shooting at the Mentiads and nothing's happening. Right. The Mentiads look like cult members, I guess. They got yellow robes and, and basically stark white makeup on. Yeah. They look pretty frightening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they look like they could be the villain of the serial if the captain wasn't just going insane on the bridge. He yeah. snaps at every little thing. Did you yeah. find out why later? Well, it's not a very good explanation, but you find out why. <laughs> yeah, Fibuli is still getting the brunt of it. Fibuli is like the chief engineer, I guess. <laughs> uh, he keeps explaining that they've got issues that need to be corrected. And they should probably correct him soon. But episode one ends with the doctor getting zapped by the Mentiads and collapsing on the floor. And then in episode two, he wakes up and is like, ah, what happened? Where's Prelix? <laughs> so they've taken Prelix and the the captain and, and his whole crew were trying to get to Prelix before the Mentiads did because it would just be bad if the Mentiads got him, according to them. Yeah, because every so often, I think every, or it's implied that every time a new Golden Age starts, quote unquote, a new candidate to join the Mentiads appears, and the captain wants to get to him first to prevent him from joining Mentiads and find out where the Mentiads hang out and stuff so they can destroy the Mentiads. Because the Mentiads are the biggest threat to the captain's power right now. Didn't they know where they hung out? They just couldn't do anything about it because they're pretty much indestructible? Maybe. I'm not sure. I also know that every time a new Mentiad appeared, a new Mentiad candidate appeared, uh, it sounds like a Matrix with. The one and stuff. Uh, but every time a new Mentiad appears, the Mentiads grow stronger because they grow in numbers, so they have more power. Right, they sort of have like a collective consciousness that they use to perform random acts of psychicness. <laughs> Some sort of psychic <laughs> miracles. <clears throat> but we don't know for what yet. Yeah. So... The Doctor decides uh, to go off to Prelix, but then K-9 reveals that Oman is captured, and the Doctor's like, oh. <laughs> well, the sister runs off off to Prelix. Right, she wants to look for Prelix, the Doctor wants to look for Romana, so he flips a coin, heads they look for Romana, tails they look for Prelix, but it's a... It's, it's a double-headed coin. Yeah. So they each go off and do their own thing. Yeah, but the Doctor also reveals that Roma, uh, that Prelix isn't in any danger and Romana is in current danger, which is why they need to rescue Romana first, because she's probably going to get killed if they don't rescue her, whereas Prelix will probably just be fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you count joining a cult and is being fine, I mean... I, he ends up fine, and then yeah. they all lose the psychic powers at the end, and he just becomes a regular person again, so... Yeah, but a really creepy-looking regular person. <laughs> Maybe it was just face paint. I don't yeah, know. Possibly. <laughs> or maybe he's just stuck like that for the rest of his life. <laughs> ah! My face! <laughs> what have you done to my face? <laughs> so the doctor sends K9 with the sister person. <laughs> and it's her name now, the sister person. Well, they don't really show up again for another episode, so. And they really don't do anything when they do show up. No. So the doctor goes with the brother, I think, to rescue Romana. Yeah, with Chemis. Um, they figure out that there's some sort of entry shaft into the the bridge. Yeah. Which is located on a cliff nearby, near the town. Mm -hmm. And so Romana's talking with the captain. She finds out about the engines, and she thinks the captain's just moving the whole mountain from planet to planet. Right. Which she mentions is an amazing feat. But just wait till she learns what's actually happening. <laughs> uh, the, at this point, Mr. Fibuli is revealed to the captain that they can only make one more jump before their engines are just completely dead. <laughs> because, the I guess, the fuel injection manifold or something like that has blown. It was, it was more sci-fi nonsense. 
It's a more all sci-fi you... fuel injection metaphor. <laughs> all you need to know is that their engines are almost broken. Meanwhile, the Doctor and Chemus have made their way to the linear induction corridor, which well, actually isn't a linear induction corridor, but apparently it looks like one. Well, after they steal that air car, which I only want to bring up because the Doctor distracts the guard by laying out a trail <laughs> of jelly babies for the guard to follow. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, they make it to the linear induction corridor, and Chemus doesn't understand it. <laughs> it's, and the doctor's like, just go stand guard. No, it's... <laughs> I forgot to mention that hilarious scene where he pretends like he can't get anywhere. <laughs> so, apparently the corridor is supposed to go on forever, and you're not supposed to be able to reach the other side. And how, yeah. the, how they telegraph this is Chemus walks in and runs in place for a few <laughs> seconds and says, I can't get anywhere, doctor. And it just looks as terrible as it sounds. It's just a really obvious guy running in place. <laughs> um, but the doctor messes with some controls, and it works. He gets to the other side after he tells Chemus to just stand guard. Chemus is like, what? No. And the doctor's like, you won't understand this. Please, just stand guard with the air car. Which actually works out in his favor later. <laughs> The doctor pretty much gets uh, promptly captured when he wanders into the bridge. He's like, hello. Yeah, the Fibuli mentions to uh, the captain that they need to look. Ramana name drops the doctor. and The captain's like, reason. doctor? We need to find this doctor. And the doctor walks in. He's like, hello, I'm the doctor. <laughs> the captain's like, grab him. <laughs> the doctor's like, oh, this is awkward. <clears throat> but, yeah. But, you know, actually, come to think of it, I'm pretty glad they didn't have the captain... Uh, his captain's dialogue be all piratey. You know, he didn't... <laughs> yeah, they did everything but... <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't, you know, have any arms or anything like that. No, maybe... but they did, they did everything but make his voice piratey to make him a pirate. I mean, he's got a metal arm, he's got an eye patch, <laughs> he's got a parrot on his shoulder, <laughs> and he's got a plank. What? <laughs> yeah, the plank that just drops a thousand feet did we mention the parrot yet no i don't think we did he has a robotic parrot on his shoulder it has a name it's like polyphase automaton or something like that <laughs> something like that i thought it was a flying squirrel because <laughs> it looks more like a flying squirrel nope it's a parrot so the doctor and fibuli drop some techno babble <laughs> for the next like five minutes yeah the parrot actually kills someone because the captain mentions that that when someone fails, someone dies. And Fibuli failed, so he kills another crew member. The parrot does, that is. They show it off screen, though. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you see his dead body on screen. Anyway, yeah, the <laughs> just wanted to mention that. The doctor and Fibuli talk about it, and the doctor's like, I can repair this, it'll be easy. And Romana's like, you can repair it, and he's like, no, but... We we'll figure stall. something out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stop time. <laughs> so they get down to the engines, and... The doctor, I think, kind of gets clued into what's actually going on. By yelling out random techno babble <laughs> terms to pretend like he's working. And then he's like, 2.16 plus 1.8. And Ramana's like, what? And he's like, four. <laughs> the captain mentions to his guards a, a ways away that they need to kill the doctor. Yeah. If he makes any sudden movements yeah so the doctor says they need to go get something from his ship the TARDIS and the captain's the captain wants to get into the TARDIS and the doctor knows this but he's like so I'm gonna have to take him on because the door is keyed to both of our body prints and we both have to be there for it to open <laughs> which is obviously a complete and utter lie but well, they the, wouldn't know that the doctor goes with uh, the captain goes with it because he doesn't know any better so they send the guards with them and they open the door to where Chemus is standing and then Chemus guns down all the guards <laughs> <laughs> well, he tries to at least. Is in the No, wait, no, he guns him down. Yeah, he he does. It's later when that rock slide, that really terrible yeah. rock slide happens. <laughs> yeah, the one where it looks like they just down a few pebbles. <laughs> anyway, they make their escape. They needed to escape all along, so Yeah. And they head the head to the TARDIS, I think. The uh or to the to the to Chemus's room. Basically, their dad just nopes out of the serial. <laughs> uh, episode <laughs> two ends when they go down to these tunnels when they're, they're looking for K9. They're trying to, ch to track down K9. So, went into the mines. 
To also see what happened to Califrax. Yeah, and the scanner is going haywire now. If it wasn't before. Yeah, so <laughs> they're like, "What? It, what is what?" And the dog's like, "Wait a minute, I know where I heard um, that dragon is for before because it was he, he found this rare gem earlier that was only found on two planets in the galaxy and one of them was uh Bandragonus 4 i think Bandragonus something ben, like that ben I don't drag, know. ben 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 <laughs> ben ben uh, 5 actually apparently oh. ben 5 and he's like wait i don't know where i've heard that before and it turns out that ben 5 disappeared mysteriously a couple of years back and then <laughs> no i was like wait a minute why so and no one survived either they just, <laughs> He actually has this really depressing line about how a, a hundred thousand million souls were just wiped out in an instant. <clears throat> then he takes a look at the ground and he tells Romana to take a look at the ground and it's icy and not suitable for life, just like Caliofrax. <laughs> Basically, this is when they drop the big reveal that Xanak, which is the name of the planet, has been moving around and pirating other planets. Right, it dematerializes. It- it dematerializes and rematerializes, that's how it moves, but it rematerializes around other planets because it's completely hollow and just mines them for all their resources. And then... Sh- destroys them, essentially. Or shrinks them down and compresses them, but you don't find that out until later. <laughs> you don't find out the captain's little scheme. <laughs> <clears throat> so the doctor's like, well... Now we can't just find the key to time. We're once again thrown into a plot where we have to stop the maniacal evil villain from killing a whole bunch of people. <laughs> well, Romana actually says, I think this is actually when they're taking a look at the engines, that, hey, shouldn't we be looking for the key to time? And the doctor says getting involved in this mess is the only way to find it. <laughs> Which, as usual, getting involved in the mess of the week is the only way to do anything. Well, when you find out what the key to time is, yeah, they didn't actually have a choice to, but to get involved. Yeah, no. <laughs> Once I mean, you again. can. It's it's pretty obvious what it is. I mean, the scanner is pointing everywhere. So I mean, maybe it's just hindsight. I don't know. I didn't see it coming. Um, but yeah, so the the running through the corridor in episode two ends when these guards are on one side and the mentiads are on the other, and the doctor's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> and episode three begins with the mentiads just being like, "Doctor, we've come for you," and then throwing up a psychic shield. <laughs> the guards not being able to get through. <laughs> What was the other ser- serial where they threw up a psychic shield? I don't know. <laughs> it was pretty recently, wasn't it? I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of the heat shield. <laughs> no, anyway, they the Mentiads take them to their, their little hideout, or whatever it's supposed to be, and you learn, surprise, surprise, the Mentians, Mentiads aren't actually villains. We actually learn that when k is talking to the sister and is like, I detected no malice. <clears throat> and then right. all, he also counts down how long it'll be till the doctor gets to the room. He's like, <laughs> nine seconds? And the doctor shows up and he's like, aren't you surprised to see us, K9? He's like, yes, absolutely stunned. <laughs> the doctor's like, see that? Didn't I tell you he'd be stunned? I knew he would be stunned. And the model's like, right. <clears throat> <laughs> so they have some techno babble discussion for a while, some more discussion. Mentiads talk about the former ruler of Xanak. Zanzia. Z- Zax- Zanxia? Zanzia. I don't know. Maybe she's related to Azaxir or Ixlir. <laughs> I mean, the guards did kind of look like ice warriors. Actually, it looked like they were just wearing ice warrior skins, as gruesome as that is. <laughs> well, they didn't be use the ice warrior gun effect for the impossible to dematerialize effect. <laughs> but yeah, the so basically they had this queen ages ago, who, I guess their planet was pretty peaceful, uh, pretty uh, prosperous, Prosperous. but then Queen What's-Her-Face showed up and ruined all of that. Well, apparently she was a pretty peaceful queen until her hubris got control of her, and she decided to declare war on a whole bunch of other planets, (laughs) and basically decimated uh, Xanak, and then she died, or so they think. Right. Supposedly she lived for a very long time. But they don't believe it. The doctor says, nonsense, people can live for hundreds of years. Kind of in a little funny line there. (laughs) I would know. (laughs) But, yeah, that's all they mention of that. You don't really think it's going to come into play much. So you think. So they head uh, back to the bridge. Well, the doctor attempts to steal another air car to go back to the bridge and instead gets captured. Because they have this really convoluted plan where the doctor's going to go and sabotage the engine room. And then Romano will follow with the Mentiads. And 
bust through and basically tear everything down once the engines have been sabotaged. Right, but they're psychic abilities. So the Doctor something. gets captured with Chemus and K-9 is uh, running around doing whatever. <laughs> yeah, actually running around doing whatever. They get, they get tied up. The Doc's like, you can't kill me if I'm defenseless. The Captain's like, can't I? The Doc's like, yes, because you're a warrior. That's against the warrior's code. The Captain's like, darn. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Foiled again. <laughs> Foiled again. Uh, but they eventually escape. It's actually been revealed at this point that they need PJX-18 to repair the fuel injection manifold thing. Yeah. And the only place that's found is Earth. So of guess course. where they're going next. Earth. The In their one jump they have left. <laughs> Captain seems so... wholly unconcerned that Earth is an inhabited planet. Yeah, no, he's already destroyed inhabited planets. Yeah, the serial just kind of glosses over that genocide quite a bit. It's actually one of the darker serials in that respect. <laughs> well, they know they do go into it when you see his little yeah. hallway of shrunken planets. Which I think is right now, actually. <laughs> the, the captain shows it to the doctor now. Right, he... You see all these little spheres and test tubes, and the doctor's like, what are these? And he's like, oh, these are the planets that we've mined for all the resources and shrunk down with the force of a black hole. I'm keeping them here. And you find out why he's keeping them there a little bit later. Yeah, the doctor's like, what? Okay. Uh, I guess you're doing some sort of gravitational genius thing going on here. <laughs> and the captain's like, yeah, whatever. Somehow, nonsensically, there's Calufrax in the tube. I guess they've already finished mining Calufrax. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really take that long. <laughs> but, I mean, it might sort of bring up a plot hole-ish type thing. Because, I mean, the stars change when they jump, obviously. That's yeah. because they move. And every time they jump, the captain announces a new golden age of prosperity. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is that, like, every couple days, or...? I mean, he's only got, like, 12 or so planets there. It's implied well, they've been doing this for years. I mean, I guess you can sort of justify it by, you know, Calufrax is a pretty barren planet, so it didn't take long to mine them for all they were worth. Or you could justify it by <laughs> what Calufrax actually is. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's how they do justify it in the end, maybe. Perhaps. <clears throat> I mean, we pretty much skirted around it, but yeah, the whole planet of Califax is the next piece of the key to tie. <laughs> the doctor figures this out about now, but he doesn't reveal it till later. So the, the captain takes him back to the bridge, but the doctor has seen this weird sort of body time stasis thing going on. In the planet room. Right, there's some creepy old lady who's, like, almost dead. <laughs> yeah, and the doctor's like, what, what, what is this, Captain? <laughs> Captain's like, uh, just some lady in a <laughs> time stasis thing. Yeah, I'm sure that won't come into play at all in the next episode and a half. So the doctor goes back, well, he escapes for a bit and comes back to the bridge, and the captain's like, I'm gonna throw you off the plank. Did you notice in the bridge, you, you get an angle in episode three that you don't see in any other, you know, it's not in any other shot, and you can see a, a, a phone on the wall. It's just like a modern, well, modern for the time looking phone. No. <laughs> you didn't notice that. No. It's probably for the best, because I noticed did it. it break, kind of, did it break your immersion? Yes. <laughs> Maybe it's so they can call the TARDIS. It's a police call box. Just ring up the TARDIS. Anyway, the captain tells the doctor that he's going to walk the plank. And the doctor's like, no. And the captain's like, yeah. I'll listen to you talk when you're screaming on the way down. And he gets to the end, and they sort of shoot at his feet, and he jumps off. Yep. And yeah. episode four begins with the doctor just showing up on the bridge again. He's like, hello, I'm the doctor. I'm like what? Yeah, this part was kind of weird, to say the least. <laughs> the doctor's like, oh, you thought you killed me. Don't worry, it was just a projection. See, and he flips the switch and it turns on. It's like, hello. And the doctor's like, hello. <laughs> right, and he's holding a little projection box thing. They talk to themselves for a bit and the captain's like, what? <laughs> the like, I can turn someone else off. And he tries turning off. The captain has this nurse lady that we haven't talked about at all. Right, she's been here since the beginning, but... She's been nursing the captain back to full warrior capabilities. <clears throat> And it's revealed now that she's Zanzia. Yeah, whatever her name was. The evil queen lady. 
And she's trying to make her body whole, and the captain's like, what? What? Actually, the captain knew this already. <laughs> uh, but he plays it off like he didn't. And Mr. Fibbly's like, what? <laughs> uh, but they haven't sabotaged the engine room yet, which is what they were sent there to do, because now they immediately all just get captured again. Uh, we also forgot to mention the scene where Polly Faye's automaton or whatever <laughs> tries to kill... I think Chemus and then K9 busts in and distracts the bird and then they run around through the corridors for a while. Yeah, we get animal on animal violence. <laughs> and K9 ends up killing uh Polly Polyphase Polyphase um the yeah, Polyphase something. Um uh but yeah, this is intercut with them trying to run through the corridor looking for the engine room and getting captured before they can get into the engine room. <laughs> and, the well, the doctor gives himself up and Kemus goes to escape to go tell the mentee ads that they haven't gotten to the engine room yet. And he plays it off like Kemus was killed by uh, Polyphase. What's his name? Poly- Polyphase. <laughs> Wait, I wrote it down here somewhere. Polyphase Artron? Something like I don't know. Can't read my I own. I just called it robot my own flying hand. squirrel. <laughs> Robotic flying squirrel. So, Polyphase Avatron. That makes more sense. So, the doctor plays it off like Chemus is dead, and they're like, yeah, right. Whatever you say, doctor. <laughs> and then the nurse is like, we, mu- we must materialize around Earth now. The doctor's like, Earth? You can't go there. It's inhabited, and the captain's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> they don't care, obviously. The doctor makes a cunning escape by opening the door, and then he goes to talk to Mr. Fibula. He's like, oh, the door's open. I'll get that for you. And Mr. Fibula's like, thanks. The doctor just makes a break for it through the door. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. <laughs> so he runs into the Mentiads plus Romana, and they're trying to break into the engine room. Because if they get into the engine room, they can stop it from materializing around Earth. Right. But they've locked down the engine room, and the Mentiads have lost control of their psychic powers because when they're in the big bridge <laughs> I knew someone was going to say that at some point <laughs> uh, <laughs> the doctor made this funny quip he's like don't worry the mentiads will get in as long as they don't have a psychic interference <laughs> uh, device and Kim is just like oh what's that and the doctor's like oh that's a psychic interference device oh <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the mentiads are now powerless and they can't even open the door but not before they've really done a rock slide thing. When yeah, they were trying to bust in. when they were trying to break in, there were some guards, so they used their mind powers to rock slide them into knocked outness. Yeah, but then one gets up, and then Romano just takes a gun and just shoots him yeah. in cold blood. Yep. Shows no remorse whatsoever. Yeah, she's worse than Leela. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. She's on the kill count now, though. <laughs> So the doctor's like, well, shoot. And K9's batteries are dying because he's tried to bust the door and he's like, Master, I have failed. Yeah, pretty sad scene, actually. And the doctor's like, no, you haven't, K9, you're still good. And as K9's dying, he says something really softly to the doctor and Ramon's like, what did he say? And the doctor's like, he said there's a power outlet on the wall behind me. <laughs> so they plug him back in. And, and I, power. I guess this is when the doctor and Romana decide that the, the disturbance at the beginning of the serial was the TARDIS trying to materialize coincidentally in the, exactly the same place that Xanak was. So they, yeah. they deduce that if they try and materialize near Earth, then Xanak won't be able to materialize either. Yep. <clears throat> so they try and get to the TARDIS to do that. Yeah, and K-9's basically trying to <laughs> counter-jam <laughs> the psychic <laughs> field. The captain actually says earlier that um, Earth is totally obliterable. I was like, wait, is that a word? No, it's not. Obliterable is not a word. (laughs) Darn. You can figure out what it means. So the Doctor and Romana make it to the TARDIS. They start flipping some switches. The Doctor's like, all right, when that dial moves, Romana, I need you to tell me so we can start our dematerialization cycle. Right. They have to do it within seconds of when Xanak does. Now the plot gets really weird. I just want to throw that out there. Well, when do they have that little earthquake-style disruption cave-in thing where what's-his-name dies? Where who dies? Fibuli. <laughs> oh, that's in the materialization. Oh. 
Yeah, no, actually things do start getting really weird. And there's a lot more techno junk here <laughs> that I chose not to follow. Well, doctor, well, I'll just say I chose not to follow it. <laughs> the doctor's having Prelex concentrate on the doctor's mind, follow him wherever he goes. And, and he's thinking of a bent fork. <laughs> the model's like, why would anyone want to bend a fork? The doctor's like, I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> so they, they start materializing at the same place as Zanuck and... Earth. Yeah. Terra and the <laughs> system soul. And Fibuli's like... Captain, they're materializing at the same time as us. And, and the captain's like, do it now, Vivi Lee. Come on. Well, it's more like Zanzia yelling about now. <laughs> well, she I, controls the captain with yeah. the, the captain's robotic arm, at least. Yeah, yeah I think it was <clears> the, <throat> the, you see the captain, you know, raise up his his gun arm thing. And, I mean, he was trying to kill her, right? And yeah. she, she controls him. And mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So then, yeah, the, there's the same earthquake style thing at the beginning when they were trying to materialize, and yeah. Fibuli dies in the well, rubble. Everyone on the bridge dies except yeah. for the captain and Zanzia. Yeah. Uh, but before that actually happens, the TARDIS is about to blow up. The Doctor's like <laughs> trying to talk to Prelex, and they can't open the door yet, even though K9's slowly gaining power with his counter jamming signal. So the Doctor. Finally figures out that they can move things on the other side of the door. So they pick up a spanner, slash wrench, if you're an American, and they move it to a console. And it's really weird because they have, like, the doctor and Felix's face superimposed over this image of a fly flying attention spanner. Attention the scene. I don't know. He just throws it at the little console there. It's like, what do we do with it? And the doctor's like, well, hit it, obviously. <laughs> so he throws it and it blows up. Then the, the doctor and Romano are like, well, now the question is if we'll ever do anything again. Should we try materialize? <laughs> <laughs> and they do it. So I guess the TARDIS is just okay. Yeah. I mean, after those explosions went off on her console. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're actually fine. But Fibuli's not. Fibuli's dead. And now the captain goes mad. And I was pointing it out before the show, but I guess... Maybe we'll have a running theme this season with the villain's right hand man gets killed and the villain goes mad. Maybe. <laughs> We're two for six or well, two, We're two for, for two. two. That's a hundred percent. That's pretty good odds. <laughs> two out of six so far is what I meant to say. But um, when does the captain reveal his scheme? Now is that now he tries to he tries to enact it. Well, the doctor gets back and he goes into the room with he shows Romano all the planets and he's like, so this. Turns out was the captain's scheme. And then they do some techno babble about like if they destabilize the planet slightly, they'll create a gravity well in the time stasis field, which will cause Zen uh, cause it to break down. So Zanzia will, Zanzia will just naturally age to death. But if they turn it off, then it'll blow up and kill everyone on the planet. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really get that. Was that all it was that that shrinking the planets would generate enough energy to shut down the machine or something and kill her? Yeah. Essentially, if you shifted them into the right position, the doc's like, but it won't work. Romano's like, why? And he's like, well, because guess what Califrax is? And Romano's like, oh. <laughs> this this is when it's revealed that Califrax is the key to time. There's so, a humorous moment where they don't know who has the scanner for a second. <laughs> and uh, I guess the scanner has a switch on it. You yeah. Know, on off, because it only beeps sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be really annoying if it just always beeped. Well, well, Romano, You'd never be able to hide it. <laughs> Romano made this comment like, the scanner's going crazy, and I'm like, what? I don't hear it. And then all of a sudden, it comes on screen and starts freaking out. So <laughs> I'm just going to say it has a switch. Maybe they just turn off the... Maybe they just don't show the beeping noises off screen, but it's just always beeping. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, so, I mean, three pretty big reveals this serial which is more than most and most of them are pretty good you know califrax is the key to time the the, the whole pirating other planets thing and then uh zanzia yeah and yeah, we'll talk about all of that when the serial's over which is in like three minutes <laughs> uh but the captain tries to enact his plan the doctor's like no it won't work and zanzia just kills the captain and zanzia's like i am the god of everything <laughs> the doctor's like what and then she gets shot and i guess the hologram turns off I 
And then the dog... I don't know. The dog doing a minor escape, and the dog's like, you know, what if I did something insanely clever? And then he says some really convoluted, complex plan about blowing up the bridge, and then the planets, one of them will <laughs> fill the inside of Xanak... <laughs> And Califax just get flung into space and they can just go pick it up in the TARDIS. Yeah, some something to that extent. Then they blow up the bridge and kill Zanzia. Yeah. Or Mentiads do it. I guess, I guess the, her, um, her image projection thing was finally complete, so he was able to turn it off. I think that's what it was. But I, I don't know. know. All this stuff is... Poorly explained behind a wall of incomprehensible nonsense. <clears throat> so, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's why it's behind a wall of incomprehensible nonsense because it doesn't make any sense. But I mean, I didn't really have a problem with it to be honest. Mm, Not everything I mean, has I, to make sense <laughs> down to the last detail. But no, it doesn't. But I felt like the um, the sheer amount of techno babble in this seal was a bit ridiculous. Because it was like almost every plot point in the serial was just explained away by something that is unexplainable or whatever. I guess. It feels almost like it was just a cop-out for this serial. Uh, but yeah, they blow it up and then the doc's like, well, we have work to do, Ronald, let's go, and then they leave. And then it ends. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They, they, blow up the, yeah, they blow up the entire bridge, so I'm guessing if there was anyone left, they're dead. I don't think there was anyone left. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they were pretty understaffed. And the captain just kills someone, so... Uh, um, I think it's also implied that the Mentiads lose their power now that Zanzia's died, because they drew their power from, like, Zanzia or... Well, they drew, their, they drew their power from the the psychic energy of the planets they were shrinking. I don't know. Something like that. But, I mean, I, if, in either case, they would lose their power, because, I mean, you would think they're not really going to be pirating anymore, so... <laughs> they just go back to it. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, no, it actually does end that abruptly. The Doctor and Romana just leave. You don't even see them go back to the TARDIS for once. Probably because, once again, the episodes are running over time. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of wish they, you, you know, you saw them... Get Calufrax? Yeah, that would have been cool and probably way too costly for them to show. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably start the next serial with, well, now that we have the second key, piece of the key to time, <laughs> where's the third? <laughs> <clears throat> That's not like they would start the second one with them retrieving Califax. It just wouldn't make sense. No, it wouldn't. Well, I mean, it would make sense, but you would you would question why <laughs> their sanity. <laughs> yes, you would. You would question their sanity, like I do every serial. <laughs> so a decent serial. Yeah, I think your complaint is reasonable. Yeah, that they too much is explained through random nonsense. I mean, yeah. it's okay to some extent, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it's, it's okay to use the techno babble as a plot point in your serials, but don't explain everything away with some incomprehensible nonsense <laughs> about, you know, what ev- what is even happening. I mean, because it was like, when it first happened, I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That could work. And then, like, the third, fourth, fifth time, I was like, just stop, please. Because basically the entire fourth episode was just them talking about who even knows what. But at the same time, it's not... I didn't think it made this serial unenjoyable because you, there were still, like, concrete things at stake. You know, they were going to surround Earth yeah. and m- destroy it. So, you, you know, you know, you understand what the main... Plot there, is. There's, I mean, there's a main plot and a main conflict <clears throat> that... You know, you understand the stakes and you... Yeah, no. There was not there was a good plot to the serial. It felt like the resolution of every plot point was just always explained away by something. It's just, yeah. you know, I guess it's I'm, just made up. I, know, I guess it's like tr- happens occasionally to a lesser extent. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not like edge of destruction where the entire serial serial revolves around something you don't understand. Yeah. I think it was just, Overwhelming how many, how much more it happened in this serial than yeah. any serial before. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah. um, but I liked the plot. I like the reveals were good, and they uh, they did a good job of keeping the mystery from you until into the serial. I mean, even when they revealed that the planet disappeared without a chase and a hundred thousand million souls were wiped out, you might not put two and two together just yet until 
uh, into episode three where the doctor's talking about how the engines can move the whole planet or whatever. Yeah, I mean, even when there was a, a big reveal, you know, you think episode two is going to be the, the... Well, episode two is the, the biggest one, you know, what's mm-hmm. happening to the planets, but there's still more to reveal, <laughs> I guess. It's not like mm, serials in the past where they reveal something and then it's just them running around for another two episodes. Well, yeah, because the serial constantly kept revealing new pieces of the plot to you, even into episode four, even. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, so... The serial uh, was touched upon a pretty dark topic. Um, it was actually, surprisingly, it seems like a pretty lighthearted serial on the surface, but when you look deep, it was actually kind of really dark and just kind of weird. It was kind of just touches on genocide a lot, and, and the captain is clearly this raving lunatic who has no idea how to keep himself sane. Well, he's a pirate. <laughs> You're implying all pirates are lunatics? Well, I mean, you have to be to, you know. <laughs> are you implying they're not all not lunatics? Not yeah, I mean, lunatics? if you watch Pirates of the Caribbean, Will Turner seems like a sane man. <clears throat> yeah, all right. I'm thinking modern day pirates, you know, like in... <laughs> Like it's Somalia? Like in the, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think you can be sane and be a pirate. Maybe you just don't want to be tied down by governmental restrictions. Yeah. You implying you have to be insane to not want to be tied down by governmental restrictions? If anything, I, you could argue the opposite. <laughs> no, I'm saying you probably have to be... Never mind. <laughs> this isn't the time and place for that. But no, I mean, I'm pretty sure, yeah, if you're a pirate, you're probably not all there. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. I'm just reminded of the South Park episode where Cartman visits Somalia and he's wearing a... a, a, a he has a hook hand and he's wearing a patch and... He gets, he gets on this little boat and they have these rocket launchers and stuff. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, it, you know, it the, the doctor is clearly dissatisfied with what is happening and yeah. he clearly wants nope. to put a stop to it. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not he's going to get the key to time or not, he's like, if I have to die here to stop this, then I will. You know, but overall pretty decent. Curious to see what Douglas Adams is going to do next. This is one of the few serials, actually, that wasn't novelized uh, at all during the classic huh. series because Douglas Adams wanted to reserve the right to novelize his own serials. So actually, none of the Douglas Adams serials were novelized in the classic era time uh, that Douglas Adams wrote. So, like, City of Death, uh, Shada. But recently, they've been novelized... Some other writers have taken the unfinished novelization manuscripts from Douglas Adams' estate, I guess, and have been finishing them up. Hmm. So just uh, Expanding lo- them <laughs> into four books to make more money. No. <laughs> I guess it would be last year now. It's really weird. It's 2016 now. Uh, in 2015, City of Death was finally released as a novelization. Huh. <clears throat> so there you go. Just kind of interesting tidbit for you there. Email us at the Doctor Decadent Vegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, thoughts on Douglas Adams. Look for our New Year's Day special, which would have gone out like two days ago when this goes out. And In which we discuss Quinnis. Yeah, the audio drama. And soon, sometime in January, I have to look at the exact date, uh, the two year special will be going out, which will just be us discussing things, super secret things that you'll have to listen to the episode to find out, <laughs> or we might mention what they are next week, because I don't think the episode goes up in two weeks, but anyway, yeah, look for that, and also look for Triple Play, because we have a new episode of that coming out this week, a lot of things in January 2016, starting off the year with a bang, uh, but also check us out on YouTube and iTunes if you want to find our episodes, leave a rating if you like the show. Check us on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Uh, like us on Facebook, also check us out on Twitter, TYD Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, and next week we continue with The Stones of Blood. But until then, the end. Uh-huh.